In this video, we will look at how to create a test in AWARE from a teacher's perspective. So I'm logged in as a teacher, and the first thing I'm going to do is click AWARE. And then from here, I'm going to click Assessments. At the bottom down here, these are all of your assessment options. This first one that says Create a New Teacher Test Legacy, ignore this. It will go away soon. So we don't want to spend time looking at something that's going to be uh, removed from our list. So we're going to move down to this second section here. You have three options. As a teacher, you can create a blank, a new blank test. This means you're actually going to type in the questions as well as the answers into the test in Edgeforia so that you will print a test booklet and answer documents for your students to test. This also allows you to test online. The second one is to copy an existing test. If you had a test that you used last year and you've archived that test, but you want to use it again this year, you need to make a copy of the existing test. You don't want to unarchive the test. You always want to make a copy for the new year. If you unarchive and have your kids test again using that same test, you'll mix up last year's information with this year's information. So make sure you've archived and that you copy the existing test. The last option is to create a new quick test key. If you already have the test created, let's say you created it in Google Docs or you created it in Microsoft Word, you've already typed it up, you have the test, you just need the answers, uh, the answer key, um, go ahead and click on new quick test key. You can just key in the answers and print answer documents for your students. We're going to take a look at each one of these. So the first one is to create a new blank test. So I'm going to click on that option. The first thing I have to do is give this a title. Now I'm just creating a sample here, so I'm just going to call this sample test. The subject is going to be math. The grade level is going to be third grade. I can adjust my performance levels if I want to. I can add those if I need to. What's satisfactory? What do I consider advanced? Um, but I don't have to change anything in there. Test type for a teacher. Teacher test is the only option. Then I need to associate a course. So I'm doing math for third grade, so I'm going to click Add a Course, and I'm going to drill down third grade, math, and that's what will give me all of my um, standards. I'm going to click Generate Test, and this is the new window that comes up now for our test creation. You'll notice that my status is pending, so I'm going to leave that as is until I'm ready for it to go live. So it's going to stay pending. I also have the option to alternate lettering. So if you want your questions to go A, B, C, D, um, F, J, H, however it does it on the second one, um, if you want that to alternate like you see it on the star test, you would want to flip this switch. If it doesn't matter, you can leave it turned off. The pane on the left right here tells you the name of the test, the number of questions, the complexity on the depth of knowledge. Normally we don't change this, um, so you won't see any information here. Um, what standards have you used? And you'll see this change as I add questions. And what types of questions do you have currently in your test? If we continue to move down, there's the title where I can make a change, the subject, the type of test, the course, I can also add a course here, just as an FYI for you. Um, I may teach third grade math, but I may want to, especially if it's at the beginning of the year, add second grade math to add some of those standards as well, so that I can kind of see how my kids are doing, um, maybe from last year, or if we're towards the end of the year, put in some fourth grade standards um, to see how they're progressing towards those for the next school year. Grade level, of course, is in here, and then, of course, these are your performance levels that you can set. The very last option that you have down here at the bottom is the delete key. If you've created this assessment and then you realize it's not something that you need, you want to get rid of it, just hit delete. Right? Um, if your students have already tested and you've scanned in answer keys and you hit delete, all of their answers will be gone as well. So be very careful with this button. Only use it if you just want to remove the assessment and your kids haven't, um, you haven't processed any of their answer documents. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add some questions. So we're going to click this plus here, and you have two options, new item or search item bank. We don't have an item bank, so you're going to click new, new item. Up here at the top, you're going to select what type of question 
um, we're asking. Selected response is multiple choice or multiple selection. Constructed response is where the students actually type out their answer or write out their answer. Numeric response is a gridable. And then resource is an item that students refer to for multiple questions. So let's say, for example, I had a map I want them to look at and then answer three questions about that map. That would be a resource. We're going to start with a selected response. So I'm just going to click selected response. Below that, I can add a primary and a secondary standard. I just have to click the box. Here are all my standards. I find the standard, double click on it, and it automatically puts that standard in into this question, it attaches it to this question. Okay. The complexity DOK, if you want to track that, you can. The depth of knowledge. The item weight, how much is this going to count? Is it worth one, two, three? Normally, all questions count the same, so we just leave this item weight as one. You have the option here to um, have multiple choice or multiple selection. Multiple choice means there's one right answer. Multiple selections means they can select multiple options or multiple um, answers. They have to have all of the selections selected in order for it to count it correct. So let's say the answer is A and B, and I only select A. Even though I selected half of the answer correctly, it's not going to give me half credit. So we're going to leave this as a multiple choice question. I'm just going to type down here. Um, this could be a word problem. It could be that I'm just saying um, 6 plus 4. Okay. And then I can come down here to my responses and I can say 25, 10, 33, 6. The correct answer is, of course, 10. So I would click the radio button next to the correct response. Scroll up to the top, click Save. And now that question is in my booklet. I'm going to add another question, new item. And this time it's going to be a numerical response. I'm going to add a standard. And then I'm going to scroll down, and this time you see here we have some other options. So on your decimal point, is it fixed or floating? What that means is if it's fixed, there's not an option to bubble for the decimal. If it's floating, that means the student has to determine where the bubble or where the decimal goes. They would have to bubble that in. We're going to leave ours as fixed. Our decimal is not going to move. How many digits do we want before the decimal? Let's say we want three. How many digits do we want after? We can have zero with no decimal so that it's just the number, or we can add decimals at the end. For this one, I'm going to say no decimal because I don't need, um, need that for this particular response. So now I'm going to enter the question, which is um, 100 plus 55. And so the answer that they will have to put in is 155. I'm going to click Save, and now you see my numerical response. And so I would just continue to add questions until I have them all in there. I can move these up or down using these arrows. I can add questions in between using the plus. I can always go in and edit a question using the pencil or delete the question using the trash can. So after my questions are in, I'm going to move to the layout option. So here we still have our status as pending. The test booklet style is elementary. I'm going to leave that because I'm doing third grade. If it were secondary, I can click on this and I can change it. It just gives you uh, the text is smaller for secondary, for intermediate, it, um, so that you get a little bit more on the pages when you do the test booklets. Um, print option, I'm printing a test booklet because I'll need that if I'm going to um, hand this out to my students, if it's not going to be online tested. Um, if I clicked print right here, It's going to give me the test booklet, and you can see as I scroll, it says sample test. I scroll down, there's question number one, there's question number two. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the test key. This just lets you see um, the item number, the answers, the weight, the standard. You can edit directly from here if you want to. You just click the edit button. Um, and you can change the correct response to another letter. Um, you can change the number if you need to. 
Um, you can move questions around. Now, I'm in as a teacher, so really I don't have very many options here. Um, I can I have it selected for um, for online testing. If I want to do online testing, that's the default. Okay, um, the teacher I can share a copy of this test with another user. So I would just search for them in my list, and you can't see the top of this in my recording, but it says your test has been sent, and so it sends it to that user. I can sit, share it with multiple people. I can also share it with my team. So if I have a team of teachers, I would select the team where they would be listed here. I would click on that, tell it how I want the team, how I want the test now to be listed because it's no longer a teacher test. It's now a campus level test type. So it's going to be a team test. And then I would convert the test to a team test. I don't have any teams in, that's why you don't see that there. But if I had teams created, they would show up here. Um, the other options I have in here are to rescore. So if, um, let's say, my students tested and then I realized I had an incorrect answer in one of my questions, I could go in there, make that correction, and then click rescore. And it would rescore the answer documents for um, my students. I can delete answer sheets. Let's say I um, jumped the gun and I, I printed answer documents before I was ready. Um, I made some changes to some questions, added some things. I can go in here and click delete answer sheets. It would give me a list of the students. I would select them all and then click remove so that I could print in the new answer sheets to start over. All right, once my test is finished, I'm gonna move it from pending to active. And so now it's ready to go. So I would either print my booklet, right, that we saw here, I could either print the booklet or I can online test. And so I'm gonna show you now where to either print answer documents or online test. So after this is created, I'm gonna to go to the Analyze tab, and I'm gonna click Test Available up here at the top. Then from here, this is the sample test that I created. I can print answer documents. I can click Print Answer Documents, select the class that I wanna print for. And then here are the answer documents for these students. And I can print those out along with the booklet. Or I'm not gonna enter answers for my students. I'm going to show you what online test proctoring looks like. So I'm gonna turn on online test proctoring. And then I'm gonna go up here to this online test proctoring option. Select the class that I want to online test and then select the students. Once I've selected the students, I will click Start Testing. And now when those students log in to their um, accounts, they will be able to online test. Um, while we're right here, I wanna show you a couple things. Um, teachers have the option to turn on supports now for students. So if this particular student needs the text-to-speech support, I can click that pencil and I can turn that support on and hit save. And so now they will receive text-to-speech when they online test. Okay. Once students have tested, I need to come back into here, back into the test available, navigate to the test, and stop online testing. And you'll notice now it says unavailable. We don't want to leave these tests open for students to just change their answers all day. So you have to make sure that you come back into the test and turn online testing off. Okay. Um, one last thing on the supports, this only gives this student text-to-speech support for this particular test. Any other test that they take, it would be turned off. You would have to turn it on each time. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off for the student just so that it's not on. And that is how teachers would create a full test, the test booklet, the test, the answer documents, um, the online testing option, the whole thing. All right, so now let's go back to assessments. So I want us to take a quick look at copying an existing test. 
Basically what you're going to do is you're going to drill down to the test you want to copy. And then you'll click copy. And now we give this test a new name. So maybe this is sample test two, or maybe this is sample test for um, second period because I need to make some adjustments to this test. And then it will take you right into that same screen that we saw earlier once I generate the test. Okay, so this is the same one we saw before, but now maybe I need to go in and edit this test and I maybe I need to change the answers for this particular um, test that I want to give. Okay. Finally, the last one that you have in the list is create a new quick test key. If I have, like I said before, if I've printed the test already, um, maybe I've done it in Word or in Google Docs, I'm going to click new test key. I'm going to do the same process that I did before. I'll select my um, subject. I'll select my grade level. It's always a teacher test. I'll associate a course. Build the quick test key. And now you just see the test key. So this is asking me how many multiple choice questions am I going to have on the test? I'm going to have four. And then I'm going to add a rule because I also want to have two gridables or numeric, um, the numerical response. Then this is where I can select what my um, gridable will look like. Two digits before the decimal, one digit after the decimal. I'm not going to allow negative numbers and I'm going to create my quick key. So the same thing we saw earlier, I still have questions. I just don't have any questions typed in there, right? I still have a layout, but my test key is what I'm interested in. So I don't have to worry about these. Now I'm just going to go in and edit each one of these and say the answer for this selected response is C, and the standard is this one. And I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to jump down to the next question. On this one, the answer is D because I have an ans I already know the answers because I have the test. And this is the standard that goes with it. Oops. Okay. And we're going to save that and continue on down the road. I can move my um, numerical responses. So if I need to drag those up because um, this one needs to go here, right? I can do that. And let's edit that one. And I'm going to say the answer for this one is 22. Point six, add a standard, and save. And you would repeat that process until they were all finished. You would then make your test active. Um, under administration, you really don't have to change anything there unless you want to share it with your team or share a copy with someone. Okay. And then when you're ready to print answer documents, go to Analyze, Test Available. Here's that test. I'm going to print answer documents, select my school, my subject or class period, and then download those documents and print those. So once I have the PDF, I can print these out, pass them out to my kids, give them the, the test, and then we can scan our answers in. So this is what a teacher sees in AWARE um, for creating a test and administering a test.